born, I was circumcised. The people who say I never miss synagogue worship in my life. The people who say I give money to the beggars. The people who say I contributed lot in our church building project. The people who say I dress as a Christian. I sing Christian songs. I have a Bible. I go to church every Sunday. I come not to call the self-righteous but to call sinners unto repentance. That's what he preached. He was preaching repentance to them. He, he wanted them to realize that they were sinners. That no matter how many times you go to church, going to church is great, but it doesn't change your heart. It doesn't change you from a sinner to a saint. It's like if you went to the car park, going to the car park doesn't change you from a man to a car. It's like going to the bush. Going to the bush does not change you from a man to a, an animal. It's like going and diving into the river. Di diving into the river does not change you from being a man to becoming a fish. You see, just going to church alone doesn't change you. Except you hear the word of Christ in that church. And you realize what the Bible says. All have sinned. All baptized people have sinned. All have sinned. All Bible readers have sinned. All have sinned. All who pay tithes and offering, they have also sinned. You may pay tithes and offering. I about adultery. I about fornication. I about lying. I about fighting. I about anger. I about violence. I about hatred. I about enmity. And so all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Repent then and turn away from your sin. That's what Jesus preached to them. He told them, repent ye and believe the gospel. And when they repented, that means they turned. That means they changed direction. They had been going the way of darkness before. And then they turn and they follow the way of light. They have been following the way of righteousness before, and then they turn around and they follow the way of righteousness. And so he preached that word, the word of repentance, he preached unto them the wonder of coming to Christ. That even if you are sick, and you are so heavy to carry, and you couldn't come by yourself. And then you say, take me there. Because this man, he fell down up from the tree, tall tree, a farmer. He fell down from that tree on the ground. And since eight years ago, he never stood up. They took him to the hospital. By the time he came back from the hospital, he was, you know, if he wanted to go to the toilet, they would carry him and then go to the toilet. And then if he wanted to go to the bathroom, they will carry him and then they take him to the bathroom. Everywhere they carried him. And then he heard that Jesus, the wonder-working son of God, was staging a crusade. Not me, I'm talking about Jesus. I'm just a, I'm just a mouthpiece of the Lord. And that then we were there. And they said, will you go? Oh, he said, why will I not go? Because there is no solution to my problem in this world. I will go to God. The wonder of coming to Christ. And then they carried him. As they carried him now, uh, they carried him. And by the time they brought him to the, uh, to the crusade, many, many people were already there. And he was far away, far, far at the back over there. And then the word of God was coming to him. And the word of God was coming to him. And he was deciding what he was saying. I will believe the word of God tonight. I will believe Jesus tonight. I will respond to Jesus tonight. I will give my heart to Jesus tonight. And then I made an altar call. And that person, even though his body was weak. And his limbs were lame. And he couldn't rise up yet. Because we are praying for salvation. In his heart was saying, oh Lord, 
I give myself to you. You are my creator and you are my savior. Take all my sins away. I turn away from them. All my anger, all my evil, all my hatred within me. I repent of my sin. And then he gave his life to the Lord. And then it came. Okay. That I said now, the wonder of Christ will come to your life. Like I'm telling you tonight, the wonder of Christ will come to your life. I said the wonder of Christ will come to your life. And then we began to pray. Immediately I finished prayer. I told them already, when you hear the final amen, when I say in Jesus' name, do you know when, it, when I say Jesus' name, it means by the authority of Jesus, in the power of Jesus that never fails. I said, when I say in Jesus' name, and you hear the final amen, the miracle is there. And that man believed immediately. I said, amen. Then that man rose up like this and he began to walk. Put your hands together for Jesus. Clap and drive away the devil. Clap and drive away unbelief. Clap and drive away your problem. Clap and drive away your, your sickness. Amen. And he came out like this and it was a wonderful sight. And see that man walking. See that man walking. It was a great sight. Huh? This woman had been blind for four years. A full and new woman. And then I said, Well, Jesus, all things are possible. Just come. Come to Christ. The wonder of coming to Christ. And then we began to pray. As we began to pray to the greatest surprise of that Fulani woman. She had never seen anything like that before. That that man stays there sending the word to us. I did not even come and touch me. Immediately I said, get ready now, get ready now, get ready now. Miracle is coming your way. Miracle is coming your way. I said, miracle is coming your way. And I said, in Jesus' name, blind eyes be opened. All of a sudden, that fool and woman called somebody by her and said, Look at me. What's happening to me? I see. I see. I see. And then point to this. I see you here. I see you here. I see you there. The wonder. The wonder of coming to Christ. And then, while that the woman was coming, as uh, the woman, full and the woman was uh, saying, I can see now. And then, the, uh, one of the counselors testing her. And then, what do I raise up? Only one finger. If I, when the uh, man, that's the uh, counselor, moved here, you know, she moved after him. And it was a great, great drama of miracle. While she was doing that, another full and person was coming now, a man. And she had been blind for five years. Five years. And when she finished her testimony, then the, that full and man took up the microphone. He said, now look at me, an old man. I was blind. Five years, I couldn't see anything. But now tonight, I can see. Tonight you will see. Tonight you will see. The wonder, the wonder of coming to Christ. And then it was, uh, I, it was last week. This person was coming. There was a big, big tummy like this. Two more in the belly. And then she said, when I touch it like this, it's like a big stone as hard as stone. And then she said, I eat and eat and eat. And I'm never satisfied because that thing inside her, like stone, was draining all the blood and all the food. And then she came and I said, the wonder of Christ will come to you, like I'm telling you tonight. I said, I'm telling you tonight, the wonder of Christ will come to you. And then I said, when you hear in Jesus' name and you hear the final amen, touch that thing, it will not be there again. I said, it will not be there again. And then I prayed. Immediately after the prayer, she touched herself. She called one lady and said, please, can you touch me here? And then they thought they couldn't see anything. The wonder of coming to Christ has taken effect upon her life. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. You will never be the same in Jesus' name. As it happens here in Nigeria, it happens in many, many other countries. I was in uh, Congo, in, in uh, Zaire. Zaire was, it was the old name. Now we call it Congo Kinshasa. And we're at the stadium just like you are here tonight. And a woman had HIV AIDS. 
I was at the last stage. She was dry like a tea. If you push her a little, she might die. So she, they, they brought her on a stretcher. And they couldn't put her near the crowd. Because the people, when the miracle began to take place, the people were running up and down. If they pushed her a little, they saw she might die. So they brought her very near the stage where people will not be able to disturb her on a stretcher and just gently put her down. And I knew in my heart, in my spirit, that when I begin to pray, the life of Christ will come into her. The power of Christ will come unto her. And she could barely open her eyes as she was like that, as a dry stick. Very dry on that stretcher, about to die. And then I gave them the word of God. When I gave them the word of God, I said, Now the time has come to experience the wonder of coming to Christ. And I said, In Jesus' name, the moment I mentioned in Jesus' name, all over there in the congregation, in the audience at the stadium, miracle began to happen, miracle began to happen, miracle began to happen. And then the summa was still there. And then we finished the prayer. As we finished the prayer, it, it, that day it was about to rain. It didn't rain while we were preaching. It didn't rain before preaching, but it began, it began to drizzle. And then people were running away. All of a sudden, the miracle of power of God struck the woman on a stretcher. And she got up. And she began to walk. No counselor, no usher, no helper, nobody to assist her. And she was walking like this, walking faster and faster and faster. Strength had come, power had come, energy had come. All the people that were running away because of the rain, when they had a shout of hallelujah, praise the Lord, they ran back to the, to the stadium. And then, all right, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Praise the Lord. And then the national television of Congo Kinshasa came up there and covered it. Those old nation that this is what had happened. That woman became totally well. That made those people to be expecting me to come. And there again, something happened. Beyond what happened at that time, uh, the, the head of the television crew who came to cover uh, the program, they said, uh, Pastor so and so, they mentioned my name, will be arriving at your airport. I will watch the national television crew to go there and then we'll receive him and then want to show what, uh, you know, as he's coming, want to show that on the national uh, television. And so the woman. That was the head of the crew. Had her father dying in the hospital. They will take the father from the bed and take him to the toilet. And then take him to the bathroom. The father was so sick. And in fact, they had spent so much money and so much energy that they felt if this man died, wouldn't it be better? Because everybody is just, you know, waiting on him. And the trouble was so much. And the man himself was saying, what kind of life is this? Is it not better to die? Because he was completely, completely impotent, couldn't do anything. But this daughter, the head of the television crew that came to receive me at the Kishasa International Airport, she said, when the man of God comes out, I'm going to look at him. If he looks at me and our eyes meet, I believe I receive my miracle. And then we, you know, we went out, played landed. After the play, landed. We went through the immigration formalities. And those people were so happy that I was in their country. They drew a big picture of, uh, of me. And then they said, welcome, Pastor the way I'm to Congo Kinshasa. And then they strike that out. And that woman, reasonable, intelligent woman. How many of you know that women are normally wonderfully reasonable? That women are intelligent. That women are wise. Clap for the women here tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm telling you that woman, as intelligent as you, I think you are even more intelligent. And so that woman knew that as they are stretching out my picture, she knew when I come out, I will look at that picture. So she went to stay near that picture. As I came out like this, she looked at me, I looked at her. Immediately, a miracle happened in the hospital. 
that father that they have been carried to the toilet and carried to the bathroom immediately that daughter that our eyes met that father got up in the hospital and the father watched and the father moved and the father picked up the telephone immediately he said my daughter i don't know what is happening to me i rose up i am walking now i am well i am strong and the daughter said i know i know i know what is happening to you i have met the man of god and i was meeting together i was seeing one another together brought an explosion of miracle upon you in the hospital an explosion of miracle is coming tonight an explosion of miracle is coming tonight and the power of the lord will touch you and reach you and blow away like a dynamite all the sickness in your body in jesus name so they brought him this man in Mark chapter 2 they brought him to Jesus and when verse 4 they could not come near unto him for the press for the crowd for the multitude they uncovered the roof where he was and when they had broken it up they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay the wonder of coming to Christ. They couldn't get to the presence of Christ because of the multitude and because of the physical condition here. Here you are tonight. The rain and the wetness on the ground and the wetness of your clothes. You will not allow that to hinder you. In spite of the rain, you will come to Jesus tonight. In spite of the cold, you will come to Christ tonight. Umbrella or no umbrella, you are coming to Christ tonight. Raincoat or no raincoat, you are coming to Christ tonight. Ground wet or ground dry, you are coming to Christ tonight. The wonder of coming to Christ. So, they said, where there is a will, there is a way. Where there is a will, there is a way. Although they couldn't actually see, I 